Well, everybody, here we go. Week six of the college football season is right around the corner. In fact, Thursday night, we get started with some, with some good ass football. Some good football, and then Friday night, and then Saturday night. I mean, it's going to, well, all day Saturday. You get what I mean. It's going to be a good weekend of college football. I'm going to be covering every top 25 matchup here with all the top 25 teams. The AP poll came out on Sunday and intrigue. Lots and lots of intrigue coming from this poll. We have four top, we have four, I'm holding up four fingers, four top 25 matchups this week. And all four of these games are going to be very, very fun. Now, I do have a couple more highlighted, um, but think about those four top 25 matchups, you know, while we get, while we wait, you know, for, you know, what, what I'm going to say about these other ones. Okay. Okay. Alright, so Thursday night, I just needed a supplement to the NFL game that's going to be on Thursday night. It's going to be a good NFL game on Thursday night, but I'll talk about that NFL game and the others on Thursday, so, you know, get ready. Get ready, college football fans. Get ready, NFL fans. You know, follow me for my NFL content. You know, get ready for that. But again, Coastal Carolina, Arkansas State kicks us off on Thursday night on ESPNU. Now the chance should be able to take care of Arkansas State pretty easily. You know, um, Arkansas State has only a single win against Central Arkansas. You know, and Central Arkansas themselves is not looking too good this year. So, you know, but I'll, I'll talk about, you know, more FCS stuff down the line. Not, not this week, unfortunately. I wish. Uh, but, um, you know, yeah, this is this is the make of a game that, you know, seemingly is going to be very easy. The chance, you know, Grayson McCall was a little bit banged up against UL Monroe. He had to get um, a brace in his foot or something like that. You know, but apparently he was fine. You know, he's, he's fine, but it's just, you know, to alleviate that pressure. And he was perfect last week at 13 for 13, you know, passing last weekend. So, you know, you know, he should be fine for this game. You know, it is a Thursday night game. And, you know, things do happen on Thursday nights. Things do happen. Friday night, on the other hand, we have a double header of top 25 teams. You know, two top 25 teams will be in action on Friday night. Temple, Cincinnati, that's the first one, Cincinnati, you know, they have to, you know, you know what the narrative is, Cincinnati has to continue to prove themselves, you know, in order to make their claim to the college football playoff bid, you know, that they could potentially earn. And we're, we're still a little bit early to be talking about playoffs. We're still a bit early to be talking about who the top two teams are too, but I'll go into that in a moment. You know, Temple, Temple's not a bad team. Temple's not a bad team. I've seen the line already. It said 28 for Cincinnati, and I don't think that's going to happen like that. Temple just came back against a good Memphis team last weekend, 17-point deficit, and Temple came back and won that game. So it's going to be it's gonna be weird, man. I can tell you that right now. Temple you know, does the same thing that they did last weekend. You know, all, all Luke Fickle and his team has to do is just get things out of their control. Cincinnati has big matchups coming up. You know, down the line, since um, UCF, SMU, Houston, you know, those, those teams are gonna, going to be very interesting for Cincinnati to go up against in, in this conference slate. You know, so the AAC, you know, again, they have to improve as well. You know, so we're gonna, we're gonna see, we're gonna see, we're gonna see what Cincinnati can do right tonight. We're go, oh, that's all I'll say about that. We're gonna see what they can do. Stanford, Arizona State, on the other hand, let's get that Pac-12 at the dark popcorn out. Let's get it rolling because, oh boy, both these teams, I've seen people both rank both of these teams, you know, and either one or the other. But the one that's ranked in the AP poll and stuff like that is Arizona State. Stanford, Stanford's a weird team along with Arizona State. Both these teams are weird because it's the Pac-12 and the Pac-12 likes to cannibalize itself. Like, this is the same Stanford team that beat up USC, you know, beat Oregon last weekend, but also lost to UCLA. And this Arizona State team just beat the crap out of UCLA like it was nothing. 
So I have no idea what's going on. All the sun is somebody going to be, you know, that second team? You know, who's going to be that team to combat Oregon in the Pac-12 South? Is it going to be Arizona State? A lot of people don't seem to buy into the fighting Herm Edwards. You know, they don't seem to buy into them right now. So I don't know what's going on in the South. I really don't, man. So let's go to Saturday. You know, let's go to Saturday and let's talk about Oklahoma, Texas. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. B. John Robinson versus Spencer Rattler. You know, two two teams. Two teams, you know, both are improving steadily. Both are looking to get a statement win. Both, potentially right now, as it stands, you know, could be inching towards a college football playoff berth themselves. That's right. Yes, I said that. You know, Oklahoma looking to silence the doubters, you know, because they've looked terrible for most of the season. They've looked terrible so far, aside from one game against an FCS opponent in Western Carolina. They've looked terrible. They've looked awful on both sides of the ball. They don't know what they're doing on both sides of the ball. Texas, same thing for the most part. Um, mostly talk about that Texas defensive backfield. You know, that defense, those defensive backs are just looking very, very weak, you know, back there. But could this be, could this be the moment where we say B. John wins the Heisman. Could, was, could this be the game where it says we're cementing B. John Robinson as the Heisman as the Heisman Trophy winner? I know it's only October, but there's there's only a few guys that I think now that could say, hey, you're getting the Heisman. And we'll talk about these other guys in a moment. Well at least one other guy. A couple other guys too, but you know. You, you know you know who these other two guys are. They just played last weekend. Um but yeah, Oklahoma, Texas is going to be a fun one in the Red River Shootout, the Red River Showdown, the Red River Rivalry, whatever you want to call it now. It's going to be fun down in Jerry World. Well, not Jerry World. Excuse me, the Cotton Bowl. Be sure to get back early, kids, if you're going out to Big D. You know, be sure to get out to the State Fair before 6 o'clock. You know, that game's never at night. <laughs> Maryland Ohio State is a game that's going to be intriguing for a different for different reasons. You know, again, this isn't a, this is the Ohio State team that looked pretty rough against Oregon. We're talking Oregon essentially dominated the game, but Ohio State made it closer than what it really seemed to be. And Ohio State just has to continue to find their stride with CJ Stroud. You know, again. They have to go through a gauntlet in the Big Ten East, you know, soon, you know. Obviously, they easily took care of Rutgers, you know, and Rutgers played Michigan very tough. Could they do the same to Maryland, who got pushed around by Iowa? Could they Could they do, could they do the same thing to Maryland to what they did to Rutgers, you know? Could this happen again, where Ohio State starts bullying teams, you know, Throughout the rest of the season, because there's st still a you know a Indiana team that isn't very good, but you know an Indiana team that always likes to give up a fight. You know they are again. Big Ten is going to have a, a bunch of fights this year. We're going to have a bunch of of really rough games. I guarantee you that. It's going to be rough both ways. We're talking low scoring. We're talking you know beat downs. We're talking shootouts. It could it could be any of those, man. It could be any of those. But um, yeah, Maryland, Ohio State's gonna be gonna be interesting, you know, to see how Talia talk about little bounces back, you know, because I mean he had a horrid weekend. He had a horrid Friday night, you know, against Iowa. Horrid Friday night. Um, Michigan State Rutgers is also pretty much at the same time. Um, that's going to be a defensive battle. Going to be a defensive battle right there. You know, Michigan State's played it close a lot this year so far. Um, and Rutgers is still a team that can give teams fits. You know, this isn't the same old Rutgers that was terrible for years and years on it. You know, Greg Schiano has things, you know, looking much better out there in New Jersey. Vanderbilt, Florida, I also have some notes on that one, you know. You know, it, it, it's Vanderbilt. It's Vanderbilt. Come on now. We, we, we can talk about how bad Vanderbilt is all day. They lost to Eastern Tennessee State, and they took UConn to the limits. You know, the same UConn team that fired their head coach, you know, after he retired. 
and resign like seven different times. So, Florida, this is a game where they need to find a way to bounce back and find a way to figure out what's going on, what's going wrong with this team, because it definitely starts with the head coaching. I've been saying that for weeks. It definitely starts with the decision-making of Dan Mullen at quarterback, because it seems like Emory Jones, he's not the guy, and yet he continues to stick with him. So what has Anthony Richardson done to be behind Emory Jones like this? Because it seems like Richardson is, you know, you know, the athlete that he is, you know, more of an athlete. He can actually throw the ball a little bit better, it seems, you know, but I, I genuinely don't know. Florida has issues also with, you know, stopping the run. They could not stop Kentucky from running the ball. Like, Florida has issues all over the place, and they might suffer more losses, you know, just depends on how they play because they played pretty bad against Kentucky. They they played well against Alabama, but, you know, well isn't good enough. You know, well is not good enough to beat Alabama. You have to play elite <laughs> to beat Alabama. Arkansas Ole Miss, who's trying to stay in the top 25? Matt Corral, still trying to get, you know, he, he's, he's still in the highest in discussion, but that loss to Alabama last week, you know, really pushed things back. You know, both teams, you know, again, both these teams suffered bad losses. Arkansas got blown out by Georgia. And there's a clash of styles here between Arkansas's smash mouth run, you know, their run game and their defense, very smash mouth type. Ole Miss likes to play it fast on offense. They're a little bit they're a little bit bad on defense, as Alabama proved, you know. But I mean, you know, it is what it is there, you know. Can Arkansas, you know, take care of Ole Miss? We'll find out. You know, because that's, that's, what, that's what people are saying. You know, people have been saying Arkansas is going to take care of Ole Miss pretty easily. And I've seen a lot of Arkansas fans get all upset. Upset at the fact that they're starting at 11 a.m. I don't know what's wrong with y'all. You know, I'd rather have games throughout the entire day. Who wants to sit here for only three hours and watch a football game? You know, who wants to sit here for only three hours and you have only three hours of football? Y'all better stop it. Y'all, y'all might be worse than Oklahoma fans complaining about noon kickoffs. Well, jeez, Jesus, man. So let's go to those two thirty games. Oh boy, oh boy. Two thirty, three thirty Eastern. Oh boy, it's gonna be this one. This one here, Georgia Auburn. This has makings of the Auburn Voodoo magic. You know that I like to call. I like to call it Auburn Voodoo. It's the. It's similar to Clemson Voodoo over the past couple years, where Clemson. You know, should have lost games that they didn't lose, but it's a little bit different. We're, this is a little bit different, way different than you know Clemson almost losing. We're talking Auburn's luck. Auburn is a team that gets very lucky all the time, and no no better example of luck than last weekend with Bo Nix, you know, taking off against LSU after being benched. You know, multiple times. He's been mentioned multiple times now. And yet he comes back against LSU and puts up a master performance. Same stuff happened in 2010 with Cam Newton. Same stuff happened in 2013 when they went all the way to the national championship. Same thing happened a couple of years ago when Auburn was a two-loss team. Remember, that Auburn team a couple years ago had two losses and were still being considered for the college football playoff. Insanity. Uh, yeah, it was because of their wins and stuff like that. But this is but this is one of the luckiest teams in all of college football over the past decade. You could not deny this. Like I just named three big examples right there. Very lucky team. And luck could continue this weekend because Georgia. I'm still not sold on their offense. I know people are going to be like, "Oh, well, this is an elite defense. This defense is elite." And yeah, this defense is elite. But you know who else had an elite defense? You know, we're talking a decade ago again. You know who else had an elite defense decades ago, but could, uh, rather not decades, a decade ago, but couldn't get the offense together, you know, and also had a quarterback problem. LSU, who got smacked around by Alabama. Like Georgia, you know, they need to find their explosiveness. You can't find explosiveness, you know, because, I mean, they, they played very well on defense against Arkansas, but... That offense still was not there. You know, that defense caused those 37 points. Not the offense. Stetson Bennett, he's looked solid. 
JT Daniels, he's injured, but he's, you know, been in there, been playing for most of the season, so there is a quarterback conundrum again for Georgia. Again, similar type stuff to LSU 2011, I think. So I know that I think there was a quarterback problem back in 2011 with LSU, if I'm not mistaken. So, there's that, and a lot of people are favoring Georgia by over two touchdowns. I don't get that. I don't think that's. Gonna, I don't think it's going to be that, you know, going to be that far away. I think Auburn's going to make this a lot closer to what you might think. Yeah, this is Auburn. Remember, this is Auburn. They pulled off some big wins against Georgia the past couple of years, man. This is this is not this, this is not the same, you know, Auburn team that was a doormat, you know, way back when, or you know. Or anything like that. This is this is definitely an Auburn team that can play. They know how to play. They just haven't played with discipline the entire season. Penn State Iowa, on the other hand, this is a top five matchup. Number three versus number four. You know, I forget. You know, both. You know, both polls, all the polls, and different. You know, different rankings and stuff like that. Like the flip flop. These two have been flippy flopping these two for the past couple of days now. And this is going to be a defensive slugfest. I can tell you that right now. This is going to be one of the ugliest games I've ever seen in my entire life. I know people like to, you know, you know, people like to, you know, go off on Sean Clifford and Petrus as well for Iowa. Both quarterbacks, you know, both quarterbacks are going to be the difference in this game, along with Jahan Dotson at wide receiver for Penn State. Jahan Dotson has been playing lights out this year. He's got what six touchdowns. You know, it's going to be some more craziness in this game. Iowa's defense is unreal. Penn State's defense is good. Really good defense. And I, I'm just thinking this game is going to be ugly. And this is going to be one of those Big Ten games that are going to be ugly. You know what they, we know what those Big Ten games are. They're going to be ugly. It's going to be real ugly. And it's not going to be like the blowout title ugly. It's going to be ugly, low scoring. I can guarantee you that. Unless something happens. You know, unless I'm wrong. Which I usually am. I'm usually wrong. <laughs> but, um. Penn State Iowa is going to be one damn good game, though. It's going to be a really good game. BYU Boise State. BYU's in the top 10. That's right. They're, some polls have them at like number 11. Some polls have them at number 10. But either way, Tyler Algier, you know, is the guy for BYU. And a struggling Boise State team looks to be the perfect solution for, you know, what BYU has to offer. They also have a quarterback conundrum with all their quarterbacks getting injured, but that's okay. You know, BYU's only favored by, what, two points, two and a half points, or something like that. Um, and I don't really buy that. You know, again, I don't buy spreads. At, uh, I, don't, I don't really get spreads at all. You know, point spreads, you know, betting. You know, again, I, that's why I don't bet. You know, but again, Boise State's not the same team it was. They still have Hank Bachmeyer there, you know, for the Broncos. But, I mean, this Boise State team isn't as good as it once was, obviously. You know, and it's just, it's just been a cavalcade of L's this year for the Broncos, and there could be another one. BYU's getting used to these day games, getting used to the big time spotlight, and they have more opportunities, you know, ahead of them. They can't overlook one of their biggest rivals, though. They cannot overlook Boise State. Can't do that at all. So we'll see what BYU can do, and um, I'll have this game. I bet I can guarantee you, I'll have this game. You know. I'll have this game, you know, on on the background or something, but I'm not going to be paying attention to it. Definitely going to be paying attention more to Georgia, Auburn, and Penn State, Iowa at, at the 3:30 slot. Wake Forest, Syracuse. This is a weird Syracuse team, you know, and they're taking on a, a interesting Wake Forest box. I mean, wow, bunch. I meant bunch. You know, Sam Hartman at quarterback, Christian Beal Smith at running back. You know, for the Demon Deacons. You know, this Syracuse team, again, the Syracuse team is weird. They beat Liberty. Liberty's a good team. You know, you know, people have been saying something about Liberty this year. You know, they were going to potentially, you know, have an, uh, you know, people were like rumoring, you know, way back when, a couple months ago, hey, we could see that Ole Miss um, Liberty game on CBS. That'd be, that'd be fun. You know, but, you know, that's, I, I don't know if that'll happen now. We, we don't know. Well, that November's still a long way away right now. But this is the same Syracuse team that beat Liberty, but they lost the, to Florida State. Florida State. The same Florida State team 
that got beat by Jacksonville State. The same Florida State team that blew it against Notre Dame. That's that Syracuse. Weird team. ACC is going to be weird this year. It's already weird. I haven't even talked about Pittsburgh and Virginia Tech. You know, but that, that won't be until next week. So, you know. And again, I mean, these, these two teams are just weird, man. They, they, these two teams are just weird. Weird. You know, it's a weird season in the ACC. And I keep saying weird, but that's exactly what it is. Like, you never expected Wake Forest to be 5-0 and and in the top 25 like this. Like, this is a good Wake Forest team. You know, again, this won't be a game that I'll have any priority over. Same thing with SMU Navy. I hate the fact that I get the miss of you know, the power of the flex bone because the power of the flex bone beat UCF like that. It's the power of the flex bone. Whoa, I I'm still I'm still shocked that Tanner Mordecai. Y'all remember Tanner Mordecai from Oklahoma, right? Yeah, he's at SMU now. I'm really happy for the guy because I'm, I mean, man was getting beat out by class by quarterback after quarterback after quarterback, you know, all them quarterbacks. Hurts, Murray, you know, Rattler, you know, Mayfield. I mean, this guy was just getting passed over. So I'm really happy for Tanner Mordecai, you know, where he's at now. He, he, it's going to be, again, this SMU team is also going to be interesting for the purposes of Cincinnati throughout the year. You know, we'll see if they can stay ranked. We'll see if they can stay right. Um, seven Eastern, six Central, however else you want to call it. For once, I'm not going to be talking about Pac-12 at the dark because there is no Pac-12 at the dark on Saturday. It's only on Friday, thankfully. So, good job, Pac-12, for cannibalizing yourself. Now, there's not as much intrigue in the in the late window as it is, you know. Previously, but there's still a couple of, of interesting games here. One of these I'm going to highlight, you know, for realsies. Um, and I have the long game highlighted, but I mean, it's still going to be an interesting one anyway. Michigan, Nebraska. Um, I'm not sold on Michigan as a top 10 team. I know people have them ranked, and I know the polls have them ranked in the top 10, but I'm not sold on them yet. And this Nebraska team is just, I, I'm. I don't know what this Nebraska team is. It seems like this Nebraska team is, in fact, going to be the one going to a bowl game after all. Remember what I said? You know, uh, you know remember what I said in the Week Zero video? I said that either Illinois or Nebraska, whoever wins this game, is going to the week to the um, to a bowl game. Yeah, that's not yeah that's not happening to Illinois now. That is definitely Nebraska's case. Nebraska can state their claim to a bowl game. They've steadily improved. They've still lost some bad bad games. We're talking some games that they shouldn't have lost. You know, Oklahoma and Michigan State. They should have won both of those games, in all honesty. I'm telling you that right now. Nebraska really should have won those games. But, like, Adrian Martinez, he's still improving as well. And again, Michigan still has problems. They have a two-quarterback system. Kate McManera, you know, Marinara Sauce. I was about, I was about to call him Marinara Sauce. Because uh, I still can't get his name right for some reason. I don't know why. But, I mean, you know, Michigan's still running the ball at crazy rates, but they can't pass the ball. Michigan's still got a pretty good defense, but there's times where Michigan's defense has holes in them that allows teams like Rutgers, you know, to get back in and stay in the game. So, you know, this is this is the best shot right here to take Michigan out of the top ten right here. This is for right now, at least, until Michigan State, you know. Again, Michigan's can't overlook Nebraska. You cannot overlook Nebraska. I know people are going to be like, oh, well, this is going to be an easy game. You know, so some people are like, this is going to be an easy game for the Wolverines. Not so fast. Not so fast. This Nebraska team is tough. A tough out. All right. Moving on to these other ones here. Um, LSU, Kentucky. Max Johnson, he's got to be kept under control. He can still throw the ball, you know, for the Tigers. You know, the Fighting Tigers of LSU, he still throw the ball. You know, he's, you know, Ed Odron still got this LSU team looking fierce. You know, they played Auburn tough. You know, they lost. They got bullied by UCLA. Remember, at Kentucky, they, they do not want to lose this game. Let's not have Kentucky lose the CA before they go to Georgia, you know. But look to Chris Rodriguez, you know, for Kentucky. They'll be running the ball. He's really good back. He ran for nearly 100 yards last week against Florida. So, Kentucky, 
You know, I really don't know what they're going to be doing at quarterback. You know, the quarterback situation with Levis, you know, he, he did not throw the ball well. Did not do well last week. Yeah, I mean, good Lord. You know, just not, not good at all. Um, Notre Dame, Virginia Tech, there's still time. You know, don't count Notre Dame out yet of the playoffs. There's still time for the Fighting Irish. You know, they still got Braxton Burmeister for Virginia Tech to deal with. And, you know, for now, I think it's time for Pine at quarterback. You know, we can bench, we can put Cone's days at being quarterback for Notre Dame the rest, pretty much. Again, another quarterback controversy, you know, that's been really fun to watch over the past couple weeks. I think we can put Jack Cone in the back burner for Notre Dame. Just put in Pine. You know, it seems like Pine is doing well when he runs the offense for the Fighting Irish. And again, you know, going on the road against Virginia Tech, you're not going to be fun, not going to be easy. You know, this is the same Virginia Tech team that took down an overrated North Carolina team early in the season. Oh, man. Speaking of overrated, <laughs> oh, this is going to be a bloodbath. Oh, Alabama Tech scene. I hate the fact that CBS wasted their prime time game on this one. You know, they expected it. You know, everybody expected A&M to be good. But now A&M looks very overrated. I mean, this A&M team has been very consistent. They've gotten robbed, basically, by Jimbo Fisher. And they're just overrated in general. They're like, I feel like Bryce Young is about to go off on these Aggies. I mean, this is going to be a bloodbath, in all honesty, man. I, 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 I don't want to watch this. I really don't. You know, there's no reason to watch this game. No reason to say anything about it. You know, other than the fact that I think it's going to be a bloodbath. There's, I mean, the Lions say 17 points for Alabama already. 17. A 17 point favor. That's, that's tough. That's rough, man. Last but not least, a game that's going to end at, you know, like 11.30ish or something like that. So I think that's when, you know, by 11.30ish or something like that, you know, I'll be making, you know, my college football recap. So 11.30 at night, expect, you know, the recap for Saturday to come up and be ready. You know, and it'll be out hopefully before midnight. Hopefully. If not, it'll be out at midnight. Around midnight at least. So, you know, then I can go to bed earlier, which is great. Um, but New Mexico, San Diego State, this San Diego State team is going to run it. They know how to run the ball. And it's going to be fun to watch them run the ball, you know, again, you know. Um, I'll catch this game, you know, later as some of the other games go final. But, you know, you know it's going to be interesting to see San Diego State. It's going to be interesting to see what the Mountain West can do. So they have, again, I was, hit, I was talking about Wyoming Air Force earlier. Wyoming's undefeated. You know, Air Force only has one loss. Fresno State was just ranked. You know, I mean, this and Nevada still. I mean, the, the Mountain West looking like that conference this year that can you know take, you know, a New Year's Six bid. You know, if Cincinnati you know decides to take it all the way to the College Football Playoff. You know, I'm not sure how that all works with the whole New Year's Six bids and and, and the Group of Five. You know, but the Mountain West looking like that conference this year that could take, you know, that could take a team to a limit. Remember, the San Diego State team, you know, beat Utah, and Utah, as we know, you know, one of those teams, you know, in the Pac-12 South that hasn't looked too good. Same thing with the rest of the teams in the Pac-12 South. So, is it really, you know, do we have a do we have a better Western, you know, based conference this year in the Mountain West? Is the Mountain West better than the Pac-12? That's really what I'm trying to get at here. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. So, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Um, 18 games. I know it's a, I know this is going to be another long one, but, I mean, I had to get all these games out. I'm going to be watching pretty much throughout the entire weekend. I'm going to have a fun time with this weekend, man. You know, this is... This may not, it may not look, you know, especially late. You know, it's going to look very, very fun, you know, very, very exciting matchups in these two early windows on Saturday, but I mean, don't discredit that 7 Eastern window. Do not discredit that window. There's going to be some stuff that shakes up the college football landscape when those later games happen, but top five matchup could potentially, you know, eliminate a team. You know, Georgia, you know, could potentially, you know, slip up. You know, Arkansas Ole Miss, a battle. Oklahoma, Texas, another battle. We'll see what happens. 
this weekend, everybody. And I'll see you all on Saturday for the recap. Y'all take care.